Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us in this session of Spokane Public Schools Keep Learning Series for Literacy. Today's lesson is for all our fifth graders out there, and any child who is interested is welcome to join us. My name is Mrs. Rich, and I'm a fifth grade teacher at Woodridge Elementary in Spokane Schools. I will be your teacher for this lesson. I'm so glad you're participating with me today. This is our second lesson in this series. If you didn't see our previous lesson, you can find it on the KSPS website. You can still tune in to today's lesson, even if you haven't seen any of our others. Today, we'll be heading back to the mountains to compare and contrast dangers of climbing Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount Everest. For today's lesson, you will need pencil and paper. I'll give you a moment to gather your supplies. Okay, hopefully you're ready to go. Now, I hope today you prepared and got your ski coat and everything to keep you warm. Today, we're looking at the dangers of our two mountains, Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount Everest. So I did bring my trusty first aid kit and I have my mountain dog to help us in case we get lost. Okay, so our focus today is comparing and contrasting. So we'll be using a Venn diagram when we do our activity today. Um, so here's just a little reminder. You're going to be looking at Mount Kilimanjaro, just the dangers that apply there. Mount Everest and just the dangers that apply there. And then the dangers that apply to both mountains or really any mountain that you might see mountain climbing. Okay, let's take a look at our essential question today. How are the dangers of climbing Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount Everest similar and different? Well, let's head to our text and find out. So again today, we're starting on Mount Everest. Remember, our focus is looking for the dangers of climbing the mountain. So we'll read a paragraph and then we'll highlight as we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my highlighting tool ready to go here. Okay, Mount Everest is the tallest mountain in the world. It is located in the country of Nepal. It is 8,848 meters tall. This means it is just over five and a half miles in height. Until 1953, nobody had successfully climbed Mount Everest, though many had tried. Mount Everest has steep slopes. Many climbers have slipped or fallen to their deaths. The mountain is very windy. Parts of it are covered with snow. Many mountaineers would get caught in snowstorms and be unable to climb. So we're going to stop there and see if you hear any dangers. If you said that the mountain has steep slopes, that is correct. And because of that, people have fallen to their deaths, so that definitely makes it a danger. The mountain is very windy, so imagine climbing those steep slopes. That wind presents an extra level of danger. It's covered with snow, which would we expect because it's a mountain, but mountaineers would get caught in snowstorms. So there's snowstorms as well. All right, let's head on to paragraph three. The mountain is rocky. Sometimes during snowstorms, rocks would tumble down the slopes of the mountain. Any climbers trying to go up the mountain might be risking their lives. There is also very little oxygen atop Mount Everest. This is because the oxygen in the air reduces as we go higher. This means that it is difficult for climbers to breathe. The climbers usually take oxygen cylinders it, uh, to breathe. If they do take oxygen tanks, they have to carry extra weight on their backs. This slows them down. What do you think here? Rocky Mountains? Yes. And then even an extra level where those rocks tumble down the slopes of the mountain. Um, and they said that they would be risking their lives, which I think that they assume as they're, you know, starting their trek. Um, what about oxygen? Do you think it's a danger maybe to have little oxygen? I'm going to say yes. All right. And then one more thing. If you said they have to carry extra weight and that slows them down, you are correct. 
Because think about it, if you didn't have that other oxygen, if those rocks are tumbling down, you would have a better chance of getting away. Or if you have that tank, you don't. In 1953, a New Zealand-based climber, Edmund Hillary, and a Nepalese climber, Tenzing Norgay, climbed Mount Everest for the first time. They both took photographs on the peak. Then they buried some sweets on the peak as a gesture to celebrate their climb. But they could not stay for long because it was windy and snowy. They soon came down. Later, many people asked Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norway which of them had reached the peak first. They said it was a team effort. It didn't matter because they had gone together. After Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay, many other climbers went up the mountain. In 1975, Junko Tabai became the first woman to climb Mount Everest. In 1980, Reinhold Messner became the first man to climb Mount Everest alone. Until then, climbers had always gone up the mountain in teams. The team members would fix ropes, set up camps, and make food. But Reinhold Messner went alone to the top. So I don't know, what do you think? Do you think climbing alone presents an additional danger? I would say potentially yes, climbing the mountain alone, because if you go in teams, you're going to have somebody to help you out if you fall. Maybe they can call for rescue. If you're by yourself, you may not have that ability unless you have special equipment. Reinhold Messner was a great climber. Back in 1978, he had climbed Everest without carrying any extra oxygen. He said that it was man against the mountain. In recent years, many have climbed Mount Everest. As of 2010, 3,142 people had climbed the mountain. Many climbers fly to the city of Kathmandu in Nepal. In Kathmandu, many see the Royal Palace. They can buy Everest-themed t-shirts, books, and CDs. Once climbers are settled in Kathmandu, they meet Sherpas. The Sherpas are locals who have grown up the mountains near Mount Everest. Many Sherpas are experts at climbing and they act as guides for climbers. The Sherpas also carry equipment such as bags, ropes, and tents. And I think I would definitely go for the Sherpas because I think that probably cuts down on the risks and the dangers that maybe you would face because they would have suggestions. As of 2013, the equipment for climbing Mount Everest cost almost $8,000. The climbers may also buy oxygen cylinders, which can cost about $3,000. Once the climbers have all their luggage, they go to a location called Base Camp. From Base Camp, they climb out up Mount Everest. All right, so those are the dangers of Mount Everest. So as we're reading our next article again, standing on the roof of Africa, remember we're in Kilimanjaro here, we want to be thinking about what are some dangers that are applying to Kilimanjaro? And then as we're highlighting, think, hmm, are there any that are similar between both Mount Everest and Mount Kilimanjaro? The first thing Natalie Dingle did when she reached the Uhuru Peak on Mount Kilimanjaro was cry. It had been a hard and tiring trek. After eight long days on the trail, she was both mentally and physically exhausted. She posed for a few photos in the thin air and looked around her. She watched the sun rise over the glaciers below and shivered as she tried to put the lens on her camera to take more pictures. She just reached the summit of the highest mountain in Africa and the tallest freestanding mountain in the world. What do you think? Any dangers there? I would say be both mentally and physically exhausted. So think about their frame of mind as they're starting, they're fresh and ready to go, but after you've trekked for so long, I think sometimes it becomes more dangerous because you're so exhausted, it's hard for you to kind of think about easily what the right choice may be. So I'm gonna definitely highlight that as a danger. Mount Kilimanjaro is located in Tanzania, a country on the east coast of Africa, and it stands over 19,000 feet above sea level. It is a volcanic mountain with three volcanic cones, Kibo, Mwenzi, and Shira. Mwenzi and Shira are extinct volcanoes, while Kibo, the tallest cone, is dormant. This means that the volcano could erupt again. However, the last eruption took place more than, more than 150,000 years ago. Any dangers there? I think I would still um, highlight that the Kibo is dormant because even though it hasn't erupted in 150,000 years, 
it could be the time. So there's always that possibility of it erupting as you're climbing. Natalie, who is a freelance photographer, decided to climb Mount Kilimanjaro for a simple reason. She wanted to raise money to help victims of domestic abuse in both the United States and Tanzania. She joined a team of five other women and together they raised $10,000 toward this cause. In addition to asking her friends and family to donate to the fund, she held a fundraiser at her apartment in Brooklyn. She sold several photographs and even offered to shave her head if people donated $1,000. Fortunately for her hair, she didn't reach this goal, and in the pictures of her standing on the summit, her ponytail is tucked beneath a wool hat. Natalie is a runner, so to train for her hike up the mountain, she signed up for two half marathons to keep her motivated. I also tried to teach myself to drink lots more water regularly, she says. In higher altitudes, dehydration is more likely to occur because water vapor is lost from the lungs at a higher rate. Also, because climbers lose a lot of sweat from hiking many hours each day, it's important they hydrate frequently to prevent illnesses related to dehydration. What do you think? Anything there? I would say in the higher altitudes, dehydration is more likely to occur. So dehydration is a definite danger. If you don't get enough water, that's gonna affect everything that you do. Um, so hydrating, definitely important. People climbing Mount Kilimanjaro and other high peaks also face the risk of developing altitude sickness. Altitude sickness may occur in heights above 8,000 feet and is a reaction to high altitudes. In higher altitudes, the amount of oxygen available decreases. This makes it harder to function mentally and physically. In very extreme cases, altitude sickness can be fatal. Some symptoms include headache, dizziness, nausea, and weakness. To avoid getting altitude sickness, it is important to ascend the mountain very slowly to give your body time to get used to the decreased amount of oxygen available. So obviously that main sentence here, this initial sentence says, they face the risk of developing altitude sickness. That topic sentence gave us a big clue there. Okay, so altitude sickness is a definite problem. Um, and again, it makes it hard to function mentally and physically, okay, which we talked about at the beginning. Natalie says that she seems to have been the luckiest one of the team. She explains that although we all came from sea level homes, I spent more time off and on in the mountains, and she was lucky. Most of the other women on her team had stomach aches and headaches throughout the trek. One of her teammates vomited when she reached the top, but Natalie only experienced a headache when she reached the summit over 10,000 feet higher than when most altitude-related symptoms occur. Okay, so let's take a look at this paragraph because I think some of you might go, well, it could be a danger that you vomit or you have headaches and stomach aches, what so makes it hard to make decisions. But again, all of this is related to what? The altitude sickness that was referred to in this other paragraph. So even though um, it looks like there are additional dangers, they're all related to this altitude sickness, which is kind of a big idea instead. So we don't need to highlight each one of the possible dangers from that altitude sickness. She was never scared on the trek, even though one of the most dangerous parts involved using all four limbs to carry climb a nearly vertical cliff they call the Barranco Wall. For her, the most memorable part, memorable part of the climb was the unforgettable landscapes. She trekked through rainforests and across deserts and glaciers. And she says, one of the most stunning things I've ever seen in my life was at sunset on day two, an ocean of clouds stretched out below us, slowly streaming over the peak of a shorter mountain nearby. It looked exactly like a white slow motion waterfall, but it wasn't just the climb or the fact that she stood atop the roof of Africa that Natalie loved about her time in Tanzania. She returned knowing that her climb would help those in need. So let's look at those two paragraphs together since this extra one was really short. And again, the text give us a huge information piece right here. One of the most dangerous parts involved using all four limbs to climb a nearly vertical wall they call the Bronco Wall. I am terrified of heights, so that to me does not sound like anything I would wanna do. 
Okay, we're done highlighting. So now you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have that paper and pencil available um, as you've been taking notes. You might want a second piece of paper because now we're going to do our Venn diagram and do some comparing. All right, on your paper, you might want to create two circles like I have. You wanna make sure they intersect so we have a portion that shows similarities. Remember, this is where the differences will go. So things that only pertain to Mount Everest, things that only pertain to Mount Kilimanjaro, where the center shows mm, this could happen really on both mountains or possibly any mountain that you climb. So let's take a look at where we would put all that highlighted information. So for Mount Everest, we have, it has steep slopes. Now we could put it in the center here because I'm guessing that there could be possibly steep slopes all around. But in the article specifically, they mentioned steep slopes on Mount Everest. So we're just gonna leave it here. Rocks tumble down. Remember they talked about that there was lots of loose rocks and they would tumble down during the snowstorm. Okay, let's look at some things from Mount Kilimanjaro. It's a dormant volcano. Remember, Mount Everest was not a volcanic mountain where Mount Kilimanjaro was. So that danger was that possibly it could um, explode again some point. There was a vertical cliff called the Barranco Wall. Now again, it's related to the steep slopes, but they've given us a specific name that pertains to only Mount Kilimanjaro. And so that's why it lands on this side of differences. Let's look at some similarities. Dehydration could occur. Now, it only mentioned that in the Mount Kilimanjaro, but if you remember, they said, when you climb to higher altitudes, you're sweating more and you're um, using all that water, the water vapor is lost, and so dehydration could occur on any mountain. Altitude sickness. Again, they kind of mentioned it over here just slightly. They really went into depth in the Mount Kilimanjaro, but um, altitude sickness, they said, if you're above 8,000 feet, you're going to get altitude sickness. And so that would again pertain to any mountain that you're climbing that is um, so far above sea level. Um, you can continue on thinking about the, the notes that you took and the stuff we um, highlighted and determine where the rest of those elements would go. Would they land in the, just the Mount Kilimanjaro? Would they be over in just the Mount Everest? Or do you have enough evidence to prove they would be in both sections? Thank you for joining us in this session of KSPS Learns. I look forward to seeing you next time.